eulogize his baby brother. We're going to pray the strength of the Lord upon his body and upon his mind as he do what God has called him.
Amen. Amen. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. How many of y'all have seen me in this role? Everybody.
Y'all saw that video? I worked on it. It was the second hardest video I ever had to do. Y'all know who the first hardest video I had to do. I don't even have to tell y'all who it was. But it took me almost four days to do that. And I just kept going and kept going and kept going because that's the way I had to deal with it. You know, we all deal with grief in, in different ways. Some of us get real quiet. Some of us get real, oh, 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 oh. Nothing wrong with that. That's the way you breathe. Some of us are, are truly hurt by the loss. And then you got every now and then you get those, yes, they glad they don't. Mm -hmm. But ain't nobody in here glad that he's gone. There's a loss. My sister passed away on September the 6th. And my brother passed away on September the 18th. And you know, there's an old saying that there's a silver lining to every cloud, that there is something to rejoice in any situation. You ought to rejoice in any situation. I can rejoice in the fact that COVID-19 did not take them. We're talking about what happened. I'm rejoicing over what didn't happen. COVID-19 had no place in my family. Amen. 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 Now there have been some losses in my life from COVID-19. A guy who's like a brother from another mother passed from COVID-19. And then the spirit came over me when I heard of his death and told me, go pray for your family. I went around to all my brothers and sisters' houses, didn't care where they lived, how far they lived, and I prayed over their houses. Because I, I knew where the source of that sickness came from. I knew the truth. It was not of God. It was of the God of this world. And that's why everything got shut down. Mm -hmm. Because the God of this world wanted the churches closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah. And he got his wish. The churches closed. And they, some of them still closed. It seems like the bigger your church was, the longer you have to go. <coughs> oh, but we was up in the, we was up praising Jesus the end of June in this church. Amen. Amen. Because we found a way to do it. We yeah. just recorded the service and sent it out over YouTube. I'd like to focus focus your attention on Genesis 45. Genesis 45, it speaks of. Brothers. Joseph and his brothers. Joseph, and I'm going to be brief with that because if anybody know of our brotherly love, it's us. Right? <laughs> then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, caused every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. That's his brothers. And he wept aloud. Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brother, I am Joseph, doth my father yet live? And his brethren did not answer him, for they were troubled in his presence. And Joseph said unto his brother, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did not send me before you. Excuse me, for God did send me before you to preserve life. And from those verses, I want you to focus on the topic of brotherly love. In our family, we had a lot of sibling rivalry. Brother against brother, sister against sister, two sisters against one brother, one should be. Uh, three brothers against one brother, two brothers against one brother, 
Oh, and that's the way it was. But see, in this particular part of the Bible, there were how many brothers of Jacob who were against the one? Oh, they didn't like Joseph. So they decided to throw him into a pit. Now you can imagine Joseph being in that pit. It's dark, it's smelly, it's cold. But he sat there in that pit. And then his brother sought to kill him. And it's interesting, I always say, when you come into a church, when you leave out of there, you're supposed to know something you didn't know before you walked in. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that it was Judah who stood up and said, no, we, we, we're not going to kill him. And Jesus is known as what? The Lion of Judah. Somebody ought to say that. So now you know. It was Judah. Amen. So they sold him to the Ishmaelites. And then he was sold to Potiphar. And now he's in Potiphar's house. He's the head butler. And then he was falsely accused. Wait. Falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. And tossed into prison. And he was in prison for 13 years. And then he got out of prison because he found favor in the eyes of the Pharaoh. But there was somebody who he had favor in the eyes of long before the Pharaoh came along, and that was God. Joseph had the favor of God. Just like my brother Tuno. I think out of all the brothers, I think he had more of God's favor than the rest of us. Because I don't ever recall Tuno getting in trouble. I don't ever recall, well, I, I take that back. He did get a whooping once. In fact, he got a whooping, Carl got a whooping, and Dana got a whooping. All three of them on the same day got a whooping because they snuck out the house and were standing on the corner in their diapers doing what I call the diaper dance. <laughs> now, I was the safety patrol for that corner. Y'all know the safety patrol. Mr. Wolf, y'all remember Mr. Wolf? He's a safe patrol coordinator. He thought I was the best safe patrol on the because he would see me running down that street every day to my post. He just didn't know why I was running. I had to get Carl and David Tudor in the house before the rest of the kids came back. One day, I was late coming out of school. I was late. There was about two dozen kids ahead of me, and I'm running through. Next thing I know, there are six of them on the corner laughing. Laughing, 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 pointing at my house. And I went over to see what they were doing. Little bit. Carlo and Tuno in the window. The big pit, we had a big, we call it the big window. In the, doing the diaper day. In the window. <laughs> I ran in the back door, mama, they in the front of the mama, give me a bing, bang, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> that was the only time I seen him get a book. I had a distinct relationship with each and every one of my brothers. Just like Joseph had relationships with his brothers, he, uh, he, he, he had some dreams and he was bragging. Yeah. That was the he was bragging. Yeah. Because he was his father's favorite child. And his father gave him a coat of many colors. And he was showing it off. And then he told him about a dream that he had. Oh, they're all upset now. All upset. Because he thought he was, well, he was perceived by them as being better than them. Because he was his father's favorite. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Y'all know, know this. We, my, my mother and father didn't have no favorites. We were all their favorites. And I know we were all their favorites because if you mess with any one of us, mama was like a bear, a mama bear. She'd get on that phone and you leave my kids alone. That's the way she was. The relationship that I had with my brothers wasn't like Joseph's relationship with 
his brothers. Each one of my brothers I had a distinctive relationship with. My older brother, Andre, I had the, 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 uh, the learning relationship. Andre would tell me things. He would educate me on a lot of things. It wasn't until I got older that I found out that half the stuff that he was telling me was junk. <laughs> it was true. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm here I am 19 years old. I meet an Oriental lady for the first time, and I got embarrassed because Andre told me when I was nine years old that everything in China is opposite than it is over here. <laughs> <laughs> Even the people, Julia. And I believe, Lord help me. I wasn't a preacher then. I wasn't a new deacon. But there I was like this. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she said, you so silly. <laughs> Darnell, y'all know the relationship I had with Darnell. Y'all know the relationship that I had with Dorn. Well, Dorn, uh, Dorn, uh, Dorn.
think one of the reasons too, I told y'all Tuna was inventing me. I told y'all he was just follow me around, especially after I had to get Carter up. And, and, and I had to get somebody else. And, and so I had Tuna with me on the paper routes. And, and they said the same thing about Tula. Oh, he's so cute. I know why he never said that when Andy was taking me. <laughs> Andy used to take me on. Andy got me started when I was six years old. That was my first job. And I don't recall any of them women saying, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and I probably was. But they didn't say that. They just gave me the money and kept on the stick. But Tula and Carla, oh, they're so cute. Look at that. He and that smile right now. Talking to you. Tuno. I think Carlo and Tuno didn't get in trouble because they saw what would happen to you when you got in trouble. But they saw what happened to me when I got in trouble. Because every time you look around, be ping pong. <laughs> Tuno, Tony, get in here. Be ping pong. And that was frequent. <laughs> I remember one time I went into my mama. I said, Mama, can I have $8.38? She said, for what? I said, I want to catch the Greyhound bus. She said, for where? I said, I want to go up to Grand Rapids. She said, for what? I said, I want to meet Daddy. For what? Because I, after what I did this week, ain't no sense of him coming home just to whoop me. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go on up there to the door. <laughs> <laughs> Tuno, he had a lot of my mother's ways. He had a lot of my mother. Even though he, he looked like the corporate side of the family, he had a lot of my mother's ways. You know, and, and, I, and I wrote him down just so I wouldn't forget. He was kind. He was generous. He was stubborn. And he was set in his ways. Wasn't he? I bet if you would walk up to that casket right now and say, Tuno, you want to go back there on camp and stay by yourself and take care of you, he would raise up and there and say, yo. Because that's the way he was. But he was my father's child. And as a child, as a proper child, he had a lot of my father's characteristics. He didn't like confinement. None of us Crawford men like it. We don't like being confined. We don't like hospitals. And that's why we stayed out of jail, because we didn't like it. Not to mention, Mama would have probably ping ping pong. <laughs> he didn't like being dependent on others, and he was always working on something. When Tuna was wet, that's how you knew when Tuna was sick. He wasn't working on nothing. He was out there in that yard, even if he just standing there with the water hole. He was doing something. He was in the house. Doing something. When I would come over, I'd knock on the door and go, Oh, it's a tune. Okay. He was doing something. What you doing to the wall? He's putting stuff up. He's straightening something out in the corner of the hall. He was always doing something. I could always tell when he was sick. <coughs> he wasn't doing anything. That's the father. That's the Crawford in him. I always want to be working. I heard, and I'm almost done. I heard that Tuno said that he was tired of this Bible. I didn't hear it myself because if I had heard myself, I would have convinced him to stick around a couple more years just to please me. But he said that he was tired of this Bible. He was tired of this body. And when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. And when I heard that what Tuno said, I said, what was he thinking? Oh my God. And then I thought about something. I put it into perspective. You need to see, sometimes you got to put your tragedies into perspective. You got to put them into perspective. I thought about a car that I had. How many of y'all have had a car that you just pray to God to get rid of? <laughs> How many of you got a car that you just tired of dealing with? I had a car, a 1986 Mercury Sable, made by the Ford Motor Company. All right. 
and I had so many problems with that car. Because it was probably made by the Ford Motor Company. No, but seriously, but seriously, I had so many mechanical problems with that car. Seems like every two weeks, I was taking it to somewhere. I was taking it here. Every time I turned around, something was wrong with this car. It was costing me money. Same thing with two little body. Every time he turned around, something else was wrong. He'd go to the doctor for this, the doctor would tell him about that. He would go to the doctor for this, the doctor would tell him about that. He'd go back to the doctor for this. He was in the hospital, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And he just got tired. Just like I got tired of that car. And so I did what Judo probably did. He probably said, Lord, hallelujah. I'm tired of this car. Because that's what I said. I said, Lord, I'm tired of this car. Now, man, it wasn't my car. It's the wife's car. <laughs> my car was worse than her. <laughs> because I'm cheap. <laughs> I didn't get mine fixed, but I got hers fixed. <laughs> Amen. So I said, Lord, I need. I'm tired of this call. And you know, he told me one Saturday morning in April 1997, go down to the dealership and get a new car. I said, but I ain't got no money. He said, go down to the dealership. I went down to the dealership with no money and got a 1997 Dodge Stratus. With no money down. That's what Tula did. He said, I am tired of this body. He used another word in there. And expected. And now he's got a new body. Just like that new car. He's got a new body. Just like that new car. He's got nothing wrong with it. It wasn't nothing wrong with that car when I got it. He's not sick anymore. He's not in pain anymore. He's not hurting no more. He's got a brand new body. A body of life. A body of life.
there's anybody out there, if there's anybody out there who wants to see him again, I know where he's at. Do you want to be there with him? Because just like the word of God says in John 16, 16, I'm going to be gone. And you won't see me no more. But then I'll come back. Just like two 